We are in the the second to last portion of the book of Bereshis, the book of Genesis. <clears throat> this week we're going to study the last verse. I sent out an email, and um, the last verse of the parsha. And um, so, what happens this week's parsha is that oh, Noga, welcome. Another person to join us. So in this week's parsha, Vayigash, this is the parsha where um, Jacob, Yaakov, descends to Mitzrayim, to Egypt, and where the beginning of the exile begins. It wasn't yet exile, and that's what we're going to discuss specifically. That um, as far as we know, this week's parsha and also next week's parsha, Vayichi, and the Jewish people and the, the children of Yaakov, the descendants of Jacob, still lived in um, a very... Um, in a very prosperous manner. They, they, they weren't enslaved yet. They hadn't been put to hard work in Mitzrayim in Egypt. Only at the end of next week's parsha, we find that Joseph, you know, Yosef passes away, and all of the brothers, all of the brothers of Yosef pass away, all the way until the last one. And only then, in the beginning of Shemot, is where we start to have the story of the slavery. So there was a number of years um, out of the two hundred and ten years that the Jewish people were in, were in Egypt in Mitzrayim. Um, I believe um, maybe 80 or 90 years, or maybe maybe less than that, maybe 70 years, but there was a big, a long period of time when they weren't yet slaves. Were they yet in exile? Yes, they were in exile, um, because Egypt was part of their, their refinement, part of what the Jewish people were supposed to go through in order to be ready to um, go out of Egypt and receive the Torah and become the Jewish nation. Um, and all the way going back to the story of Avraham, of Abraham, at the covenant of the Brisbane of Pesarim, the covenant of the pieces, where Hashem tells Avraham that your descendants are going to go to a land which is not theirs, and Eretz Lolahem, Avadum, and they will be, um, they will be enslaved, the Inu Otam, and they'll be afflicted by the the, the Egyptians. Will the, the people of the land will afflict them, torture them. Um, and afterwards, they'll go out with great um, reward, with great, with great, um, with um, great prosperity. Prosperity. But until then, they're gonna go. They're gonna go through Egypt. It's gonna be a land which is not theirs, and it's going to be a, an exile. It's gonna be slavery. So in this week's parsha, starting already last week's parsha, we have, a, or even earlier, we have Yosef goes to Mitzrayim to Egypt, and this was the beginning of. The, the, this, the enslavement of the Jewish people is the beginning of the prophecy of the vision that Abraham had had where Hashem appeared, appeared to him. The beginning of that was starting to uh, materialize and because Yosef was the cause of later the, the tribes coming down to Egypt to um, look for food because there was famine and there was no food in Israel. And Yosef, who was the second in command in, in, in Mitzrayim and um, had the... the um, had the, the um, great storage and um, storehouses full of um, full of um, of crop and food, which is what sustained the people, including the descendants of Yaakov, um, during the time of famine. And then finally, in this week's parsha, Yaakov also comes out to Mitzrayim after um, after the the very emotional story, the beginning of this week's parsha, the beginning of a Yigash, where Yehuda talks to Yosef, and then finally Yosef opens up and he says, he tells them that I'm your brother, and they get closer together, and they get they, they come closer, and um, they embrace, and then Yosef sends special wagons to um, Israel to bring Yaakov down to Mitzrayim. Seemingly, this is a very happy moment, a very joyful moment, and it is a very joyful moment. Finally, after 20 two years of Yaakov and Yosef being separate and Yaakov not even knowing um, if Yosef was still alive. Well, he thought he was dead. He thought, well, yes, okay. the, on a simple level, he heard he was dead. Did he actually believe his children that, he, that his son was dead? That's questionable. It says oh. that, oh. that he would, that he, he refused to be comforted. Yeah. Um, and um, I think it's explained, uh, Rashi brings it down, I'm not sure where it's from, that if a person, if, if somebody is lost, this is very relevant actually, because we have, you know, what's happening in Israel and with the Khatufim, 
And when someone is, the, the hostages, when someone is lost, I mean, you don't know if they're alive or they're not alive. It's much more painful than if they're not alive. And it's harder and you can't be comforted because you don't, because you don't, you can't separate from them. Right. My only Abel. Yeah. So, so Yaakov, by he wasn't ready to, to be, to be comforted. He didn't, he didn't feel, he wasn't sure that this was the truth. He knew that his sons might have been up to trouble. Um, and actually, that's why um, later on, I believe in last week's Parsha, when, um, when Yaakov sends Binyamin, his youngest son, to Mitzrayim against his will, and he's very broken about it, and he says that he's lost Yosef, and now he lost Shimon, and now he's going to lose Binyamin, he says, you'll go there, and he says, hopefully Hashem will, I'm going to find the, the words, because I don't want to misquote, he says, The Kelsha may may God give you Yetemachem Rachamim will give you mercy in front of the uh, he'll hopefully he'll give he'll bring you mercy in front of the man in front of the, the second in command of Joseph Joseph. He'll send for you your other brother and and Benjamin. So here Yaakov alludes pretty clearly to the fact that there's another brother that's that might be that that could be sent back from Mitzray from Egypt. Where is so, this? In in Miketz, in last week's parsha, in chapter forty-three, verse fourteen, you dalit. Perik, um, yeah. Oh, no, I have it there, but I didn't. Fourteen. Um, fourteen, forty-three, verse fourteen. Oh, earlier, before that, before that. Yeah. Sorry, um, no, no, it, it is, yeah, 14, I believe. Um, Mem Dalet or Mem Gimel? Mem Gimel. Uh, Mem Gimel, okay, you said 44, so I thought, yeah, okay. I should have said it in Hebrew, Mem Gimel, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. You see? Can you lose clearly to the fact that that I thought he was talking about Shimon. You're right. So, about so Shimon. It's interesting because because why but why would the first use these interesting words? I, I, this is not what we're going to focus on today, but it's no. It says etachichem, your brother. Um, acher. What's acher? Other. Meaning, Other. Yeah. Right, so he's alluding to something in addition. In addition, he doesn't just say "v'shilach lachem at Shimon." The, the right. verse could have could have made could have minimized on words. I mean, it could have just said "v'shilach lachem et achichem." It will send he'll send for you your your brother, the Ed Benjamin, and Benjamin, or right. send for you Shimon and Benjamin. Why is he saying "acher"? Other, yeah. there's something else over here, right? Right. I always read it as uh, the Shimon is just not that important. And maybe it connects to me. It connects about with what happened with Dina. Uh, that Shimon and Levi were so ruthless, and I don't know. How can, how can one child not be important to, to their father? I'm not the... saying that he's not important, but him, Shimon and Levi did such a terrible atroc atrocity, and Jacob was very Yaakov was very angry with them. Right, right. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Anyways, I, in the last in the last verse of this week's parsha of Ayikash, so we have a verse um, that says as follows: the last verse, last verse of Ayikash, Perek Mem Zayin, twenty-seven, Chaf The verse says as follows. So this is this is finally the Yaakov has come to Mitzrayim, to Egypt. They met with 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 Paro, and his sons have met with some of his, some of his of, of the tribes have also met with Paro. Mm -hmm. And here it says, "Vayeshev Yisrael Beretz Mitzrayim." The Jewish people resided; they they settled in the land of Mitzrayim, Beretz Goshen, in the land of Goshen, which was, as we know, Goshen was the um, 
the um, the high end part of Mitzrayim. It was the the, the, the nicest part of Egypt. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, Hazuba, and they they um, held on to they, it. Sorry, they held on to it. They held on to it, or they they dwelled in it. By Yifru, by Yibum, and they 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 were fruitful and they increased greatly. Mm-hmm. Now there's a few explanations in this word by Achazuba, and they 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 held onto it as you translate it. Um, actually, the midrash says that by Achazuba, even though it doesn't fit with the simple reading of the words, that it means that the land held onto them, meaning that in a way that they 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 didn't want to be there. It was like they were held onto them, but it was like they, they didn't, they were like pulling away from it. Had to hold onto them because they didn't want to be there. So that's that's the Midrash, um, meaning it was against their will. They didn't want to really be in this place. They wanted to be in Israel, they wanted to be elsewhere. So the um, Midrash says that the land held onto them rather than them holding onto the land. Yeah, it doesn't fit with the grammar. I understand why, you know, it wouldn't, it would, it, it means no, it's a nice, it's a nice thought. It's a nice. No, if it would say if it was that they held on to it, it, was, it would say vayo va, va, It Doesn't say vayo and they held on to it. It says vayeh So it could be yeah. translated. Yeah, yeah. Right. So held on to them. The Rashi says simply that it was a It was their. It was their settlement. It was their. It became like their their possession. Mm-hmm. Now we know. And by the way, the verse also repeats. The verse says they were in Egypt and they were in Goshen. So it doesn't just say they were in, they lived it, they dwelled in Goshen. We know Goshen is in Egypt. It points out that they were specifically in Egypt, even though they, we know from the story that they're in Egypt. But it's telling us, it's pointing right. out that Goshen is in Egypt. Now, we know that at the, um, at the Brit Ben Avasarim, at the covenant of the pieces with Abraham. So Hashem tells Abraham that they're going to, that your children are going to be um, Gerim. They're going to be, they're going to be like, they're going to be settlers. I mean, they're not going to be, they're, they're going to be, they're not really going to, they're going to be strangers, sorry. In, they're going to be strangers in this land. So there, it's not going to really be theirs. It's going to be like that somebody else's land, and they're being their guests. So they're strangers that are in this land, but they're not. It's not that they actually own, or that this actually belongs to them. So how can it be that they a chazuba that they that they reside that they became their possession? A chuza a chuza means possession. How could it be that it became their possession? It doesn't fit with the prophecy or with the vision that Hashem had told which was specifically part of the journey of the Jewish people, that the journey of the Jewish people is going to include slavery and it's going to include difficulty and, and, and being being alien or being foreign to the land where they're going to be. But here in the way it seems that they're living in a very good life, they have become, it's become their possession. Yosef has completely given over to them this beautiful part of Egypt. The most, the nicest part of Egypt is theirs. And by Yeshev, by Yeshev they are, they have settled, they have they have they have made themselves at home. They're living in a very good life in Mitzrayim. So it doesn't seem to be that the that the covenant that Hashem told Abraham is is being fulfilled. Mm-hmm. So the Torah is pointing out that it's the Eretz Mitzrayim. You should know that this is still the land of Egypt. So. Regardless of how well they lived, how um, how comfortable they were, it wasn't theirs. It wasn't the land which Hashem had given to the Jewish people to be theirs. So there was a certain kind of being foreign to it. It wasn't fully, they didn't fully make themselves at home there. There was still a distance between their, between them being, they weren't fully comfortable in this land. They were still strangers, so to speak. It's kind of interesting that you're saying all this because we know that it was very hard for them to leave Mitzrayim. And I thought that it was because they were quite comfortable, especially at that time where Joseph was alive. And yeah, but, 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 
But they wouldn't come, they would they didn't want to leave Mitzrayim much later after the slavery. Right. So I mean, and that was after after more than a hundred years of them being 130 years of them being slaves. So they have completely forgotten. There wasn't even they weren't even around anymore, the people that remember those those times. That's true. Maybe there was, maybe there was uh, one or two of them, but the but the, Sarah, the, the daughter of Asher, there were a couple of people that were still around from the times of Joseph, but the, everybody else had passed up. So they were fully, yeah, by then they would become oh, fully slaves. They took, they took Jacob. Right, they... right, there was a certain kind of, they didn't want to leave. They did, they, there was a certain, um, which which has meaning to it, you know, and when somebody is uh, in, in a very deep trauma and they're very stuck in it, that they they found comfort where they are and they don't want to go somewhere else. They don't want to leave it and go to something new and have to figure out something new because it's scary for them. So there was that aspect to it. And maybe that's part of our discussion over there. Meaning what, what was going on? What was the, what was supposed to be the slavery of the Jewish people or the, or the Jewish people going through the Rebbe, the Rebbe goes on to another question, which is that ultimately there had to be slavery. It's not enough that they could be far into the land. They, they were comfortable in the land. They had a good life in the land. So, wasn't wasn't slavery they weren't they weren't going through this 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 pain and this suffering that they were that they were really supposed to go through at that time but even but look even in Vayichi, it says that after jacob dies they take him back to the land to Canaan, and they bury him and i was thinking at that when i read that i every time i think so if they already went back why didn't they just stay there why did they then go back again to egypt the only explanation I can come up with is that it was comfortable in a way to stay there. Because it says that Joseph, after Joseph takes away the land from all the Egyptians, really, and only the priests, the Kohanim, have their land, everybody else is already enslaved, which is really horrific stuff he did there. But anyway, um, and then he gave his brothers a really nice chunk of land and it says, meaning they did very well. So I don't know. Every time I think about it, that he had, they had plenty of chances to go back, and they even did go back to bury Jacob, but then they came back to Egypt. And Yosef couldn't leave. Yosef had to come back to Egypt. He made a deal with Yaakov. He had made a deal actually with, with Paro that he's going to come back. There's a whole story about how he. How Paro he threatened Paro because he did it's not in the, it's not it's in the in the Talmud, but how Paro didn't want to let him go to bury Jacob, I believe if I remember remember correctly. So Yosef was he had responsibility in Mitzrayim. He couldn't he couldn't um, he couldn't just just um, just not um, he couldn't just um, not come back. And his brothers probably wanted to be with him. They were all together. They were family, you know. Uh -huh. um, and there was still famine, by the way. Famine was still going on, so there was still there was still famine happening outside of um, yeah, outside of of Mitzrayim for sure. Anyways, I want to let's move forward. So, so, the, so the deeper question is, they there was a certain there has to be something that going through the slavery of Egypt wasn't just about being in a different land. There was something also that it should it should it should afflict them. It should be difficult for them. Yes, it came true later on, but at this point. There, there was there was supposed to be refinement. They were supposed to go. Through, it's like it says that going through through um, going to Egypt was like going through the the um, the burning the burning um, Kor Barzel. The the um, the, um, what's the translation of Kor Barzel. Basically, okay, the, I don't need a translation, but maybe Shira does. Shira speaks the melting, the melting pot. The melting. The, yeah, the we melting know. Pot, what, we know what it means. <laughs> Yeah, the, the melting pot, which was that they had they had to really suffer, they had to go through the burning, they had to, to in order to be able to be to be vessels to receive the Torah, they had to go through this affliction, which was going to refine them, it was going to turn them into the people that they became. So how is that coming true at this time? So especially if they if Goshen was like it became like an inheritance to them, it became like it was theirs. It says the midrash tells us that actually. It wasn't only that Joseph, that power gave it to them. Actually, that earlier on, many years earlier, this is the Midrash says this, but that many years earlier, when 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 Paro um, abducted Sarah, 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 and then he let her go free, he gave Abraham lots of possession. Part of what he gave Abraham was the land of Goshen. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, this was this was theirs. 
in the, this was this was their inheritance. It wasn't just their possession that that was given to them by power. This was their inheritance. They would this was theirs. Mm -hmm. So how could you say that they were that they were um, experiencing um, slavery and affliction and being refined and the and the melting pot when they were living a good life in a land which belonged to them? Mm -hmm. So the midrash tells us, or the, actually the Zohar, the Zohar tells us that. When it says in the beginning of Shemot that uh, that they were afflicted, but this is not this is not literal. This is obviously the more the 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 sod, the um, mystical explanation of the Torah. But when it's or the the midrashic explanation that when it says that they were that they had to, were, were put to hard work, sorry, that hard work doesn't mean literally. I mean that it mean, later on it means literally hard work. But at the, the earlier time, sometimes hard work could mean hard work of Toiling in studying Torah. Avodah kasha, hard work. Kasha comes from the word kushya, which means questions. We have to have, or it could, it could be the same word. So kushya means that we have to. Yeah, kasha the kushia. So through having questions in Torah, it says bachomer with with cement or with with them. Um, what's bachom? What, what's bachomer? Kal bachomer. Chomer, kal bachomer is a way of studying Torah that way. You say we derive something. More severe from something light, so yeah, and yeah. yeah. So was chema was chome was this was the this was the cement because it's the same word, and um, levenim which means bricks, libun also means to whiten, libun hilchata that hilchata is to white is to smoothen out to to to, to derive to whiten out the discussion the, all of the um, the um, debates and the dialogue in Torah to come out with the with the law. So there is a way of studying Torah, and you see this by by you know it says that Ariza, when he would study Torah, he would not that maybe somebody else. I think that Ariza, his hat, the top of his hat, he had a big hat, top of his hat would be wet from sweat. Mm -hmm. So he was he was toiling. It was it would you see people that toil that they they work really hard to understand something, especially in Torah. The Torah is so wide and so broad, and there's so much to to work on that through toiling in Torah. They attained a level of this was hard work. This was it says Torah weakens you. So this, in a way, was instead of slavery for a certain amount of time. So as long as it says earlier in the Torah, in the in the portion that, that Yaakov sent Yehuda ahead of him to Mitzrayim, the, the midrash says it's brought down in many places. Why did he send Yehuda ahead of him to establish a yeshiva? To establish a yeshiva, Yehuda was was the Judah, where they were the they were the ones that they studied Torah, and they were the ones that the, that were later the king of David came from Yehuda. So Yehuda, Yehuda, he established a yeshiva, a place of study. I mean, obviously they didn't have Torah the way we have it today. They had a different, they had an earlier version, or they had, you know, it was I mean they had Torah that they from Abraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov, and, and even from the Shem, the son of the son of Noah. It says he taught Torah, he taught Torah to Abraham. That Yaakov spent 14 years in yeshiva. There's 14 years missing in, Abraham, in Yaakov's life. If we make the calculation, we spoke about this a few weeks ago. 14 years he spent in yeshiva. So they were studying. They had they had a um, they had a transmission of Torah. So there was discussion and there was hard work of Torah happening. So th that substituted that took the place of the slavery for a certain amount of time. And it says, it says in Pirkei Avot, if somebody, Kolam B'Kabel, I love all Torah, if somebody accepts on himself the yoke of Torah, Ma'abirim Mimenu, all Malchut, all their Eretz. The yoke of, 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 of um, the yoke of slavery, of Malchut, of being, of, 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 um, the, 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 the yoke of taxes, basically, and the yoke of, of having to work the land and having to be a regular person in the world is taken away from you. So if instead, if you take the yoke of Torah, and we become a slave to Hashem instead of a slave to the world, then we won't have slavery to the world. The, the, the being a slave to Hashem, studying Torah and toiling in Torah will take that place. One second. Is that how uh, Yeshiva Bochers uh, explain the fact that they don't want to go back to life ever? They just want to stay in the Yeshiva? Okay. That's uh, that's not the way of Torah. The way of, the way the way of Torah is that you. That you have to have the grounding of yeshiva, but then eventually you have to have you have to you have to also have the experience of being in the world and and working through the world to transform it, like we spoke about last week at length, the whole the whole miracle of the of the menorah, 
right? There has to be time of prayer and it has to be time of, of lighting the menorah and of lighting the oil. But then there's time when we have to take that, when we have to live it in our lives. But this was, this was at a time when they were able to, if we were able to have start yeshiva all day and we don't need to work, then for sure we should. Then maybe then, then Hashem has put us in a situation that that's, that that's where our work is right now. Our work right now is to study Torah. So it, meaning, able, when I say able, I mean, um, I mean that we have the circumstances, the world around us allows for us to do that, then of course yeah. we should do that. Now, this is a very interesting point. The Rebbe says that ultimately they were still not in their land. It was a foreign land. But if they were very comfortable, but because they were on a, on a higher spiritual level, Yaakov was still alive and, and Yosef was still alive and the tribes... And they taught Torah, and they were studying, so they also felt and uh, they felt alien to the land. They also felt they also accepted and they appreciated that this is not theirs. That as much as well as they're living and it's goshen and it's, it's good life and it's their land. And by Yeshiv, they could settle and they had good. They were able to to live to prosper. Yeah. But they they felt alien to the land. They felt that this is not theirs, and that that in itself also was an experience. Of them being, them being, them being gayrim, them being strangers. They didn't feel it was really theirs. As time went on, in the end of next week's part, in the end of this week, of next week's parsha, it says by Yamas that Yosef passed that passed away, and his brothers and everyone, everyone from that generation was gone. Now they descended, also on the spiritual level, they descended to a low level where now Goshen, which used to be the place which was the most beautiful, amazing place, and it still was actually became the place of their slavery. Yeah. It, it was transformed somehow. There was, there was there, whatever the story was, how Paro was able to, to um, how Paro was able to blackmail them into becoming slaves. But the point was that, first of all, they became comfortable in the land in a way that it started, that they forgot about the yoke of Torah. They started to become comfortable in a way where they didn't feel alien to them anymore. And when it didn't feel alien to them anymore, so the, the materialism of the land started to take its place in, in, instead of what they should really care about, what their real values were, were, which was not to be there, to be in Israel ultimately, and to study Torah, to be connected to Hashem. Mm -hmm. Instead, they, they got pulled, sucked into the materialism of Egypt that, that eventually became their slavery place also. Yeah. Because they, they forgot that they were living in, they forgot that this is Eretz Mitzrayim. This is not theirs. This is the land of boundaries. This is the land of Egypt. This is not the land which is the land of, which is the land where they're supposed to be. It's not the land where Hashem is what taken care of, which is the land of Israel. So we basically have all different things happening over here. On the one hand, we have the Chazuba, that the land that they that they that they um they settled there, it became there. They 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 made themselves at home, which was the beginning. Which that making themselves at home on a very physical level is okay because there's nothing wrong with making themselves at home as long as they remember that it's not their home. As long as they, they keep in mind that is that the land of Israel is really their home, and that the service of Hashem is their real work. Um, and study of Torah is their, is their slavery instead of the toiling physically. Mm -hmm. But eventually it became theirs in a way that they became comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we allow the materialism to take over too much, then it says that if somebody, that, um, that if somebody who um, neglects the Torah in a place when they're rich, eventually they have to neglect the Torah from a place of being poor. So the same, this, this same materialism, which was okay for them to experience and to have, um, and they could still be slaves in it instead of allowing, instead of keeping on that level, after the generation passed on, after the, the, the next generation, it became, it actually consumed them. It actually became the Yechazuba that it held onto them. That they were, that they, be, they be, that instead of them holding on to the land in a way that it was, that, in, in, sorry, in a way that instead, instead of them living in the land, it became a, a relationship of it being held on. They held onto the land because they held onto the materialism, and the land held onto them that they were consumed by the materialism of the land, and that also consumed them as people and made them into slaves. 
-hmm. Yeah. The, the deepest purpose of all of it was that they should become inheritors of the land. They should inherit, they should work through being in the land. They should be able to take all of the good, which is in Egypt, and bring it with them as they go out to refine Egypt. That's why it says later on in in the portion of uh, of of Bo of Shalach when they were let, let out by Yenat Slois Mitzrayim they emptied out Egypt, and the the, um, the Zohar I believe of the Midrash says that they emptied out Egypt like they took everything with them that they took the sparks the the holy sparks over there they through their work in Egypt they refined Egypt. The message the message is a very is a very um is a very straightforward one which is that. So we are given, as Hashem blesses us, Hashem gives us the blessings that we need in our lives, um, hopefully, and we pray for them, and, you know, materialism, and good lives, and everything else, and it's our job is to keep in mind, to give everything the, the place, to give everything the attention and the energy that it deserves. Mm -hmm. Physicality, or money, and, 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 and being prosperous, and, and having possession, and materialism in general and in general anything all physical pleasure is supposed to we're, we're given it to, to enjoy we're given it to to use out properly to appreciate to live good lives but we can't let it hold on to us we can't forget what our real purpose is in the world we can't forget our real purpose is here to serve Hashem a real purpose is to to be connected truly to ourselves which is to our neshama to our soul and therefore, to, to refine this world, to make this world a better place. So we are inheritors of the land. We are inheritors of the world. We are here for a purpose. We're supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be up there. We're supposed to be down here. We're supposed to be working in, in Egypt. We're supposed to be working in the land. Like you said earlier, we're not supposed to be sitting in Yeshiva all day unless we were given those circumstances. And within that, we could live there. We could, we could dwell there. It's fine. But don't forget that there is that we are alien. Meaning that this is not the this is not the focus. The focus is something higher. The focus is Hashem. The focus is making is helping others, making this world a better place, making this world a messianic world, meaning a place where we where everybody is good to each other because they experience they connect to a higher purpose, they connect to Hashem. If we don't if we forget about that, if we allow the the, um, the materialism to consume us and to become to, for us to become dwellers in the land in a way that this that this becomes our home this is my this is mine this is your this is my possession that's this is belong to you this belongs to me and i have this and i own and i have this real estate and i have this i have this possession this money and i have this happiness and all these other physical pleasures that we have and then we 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 get we get and um, drowned in that then then actually we're going to lose that materialism itself because that's going to hold on to us and make us slaves to it. We're going to become slaves to that materialism to a way that we actually suffer. We know we could have there are people in the world that have lots. There's, there's many in this area, and I know that people that have lots and lots of um, materialism and physical pleasure, and they have lots of they have lots of space, and they have lots of money, and they have they, they can go on good vacations, but they don't live happy lives because happiness doesn't come from being consumed in our materialism. Happiness comes from staying. Say, as we say in Yiddish, in Hebrew, a tefa, in Yiddish, a tefa hecha, staying a little bit above the world that we live in. Just being able to look at it from an outside perspective and say, I have this, Hashem gave me this, but my purpose is something deeper than that. And I'm going to use it for that. I'll enjoy it, but I'll move on. Not get stuck and not get addicted to it. So it's, it's an important message for all of us. Yeah. Abrupt ending. I actually have to go in a minute. Thank you for joining us. Have a good week. Thank you, Abel. Yep. And uh, we'll pass on the recording to our other um, regulars so they can uh, also um, enjoy. Thanks Thank for joining. No, I'm sure. Nice seeing you both. All the best. Thank you.